sick and tired of reducing this issue to one of economics alone. People that I talk to, people that I that are part of my group, that I hear from every day say things like, I want my country back. I don't want my kids to grow up in Mexico or Uruguay or Somalia. I want them to grow up in the United States. And that's what we care about. Economic issues aside, they're important, but they're not nearly the whole piece of the pie. And so we do ourselves a disservice when, when we reduce this issue to one of the economics. If the next segment is uh, a series of questions that the United for Social Justice has prepared and the Utah Minutemen Project has prepared. The first question from United for Social Justice to the Utah Minutemen Project. Given that America's real wages have stagnated since the early 1970s, regardless of immigration status, and that in American history, the rise of real wages has been closely connected to unionization. Why do you support the criminalization of immigrant labor, which makes it, which makes it more difficult for them to organize with legalized labor? Can I just ask for a definition of terms? I don't know what criminalization means. I'll, uh, if the United States for Social Justice would like to define that term. When we talk about criminalized labor, we're talking about labor, someone who goes to work and by them going to work are considered to be breaking some sort of law. A law of the land? Certainly. Passed by a democratic legislation? Oh, are they, I used to uh, argue the interest. This is, you have, you have two minutes. Just, just to, start. to whatever extent the United States government is democratic, yes. <laughs> Let me just say, in response to this question, that the illegal aliens do enough to criminalize themselves. I don't need, my laws don't need to criminalize themselves. If you're saying that our laws criminalize people, what you're saying is that, that we should really have no laws, especially relative to the, the people that you prefer. And, and if we say that you have no, uh, if, if you say that we shouldn't have this particular law because it, it criminalizes someone's labor, then what about other laws? I might disagree with, or someone else might disagree with, and where do you stop? And what is the proper form in which to make those laws? And who decides what laws are just? You get into all kinds of sticky issues relative to sovereignty, relative to power and the exercise thereof, when you start questioning the democratic process and the laws that are passed through it. Simply because someone does not, someone thinks the law is unjust, doesn't mean that they don't have to follow it. What it does mean is that they can work through democratic processes to change the law. It doesn't mean you ignore it or facilitate those people who intend and, and continue to break the law. And according to the rules set by United for Social Justice and Utah, the Utah Minimum Project, United for Social Justice has one minute to respond. Sure. Um, again, as Greg mentioned earlier, throughout the history of the United States, there have been a lot of terrible laws. Slavery, women can't vote, all kinds of things. And so, yeah, that is the point, is to try and work through democratic processes to make better laws, to improve the laws, and make them more just. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, work through the democratic process to, number one, block bad laws, like Stephen Sandstrom's bill, that will further criminalize undocumented workers. And secondly, we're trying to pass good laws that will um, lead to legalization. So uh, we totally uh, agree that that's the way to do it, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, and additionally, because we have a, a 20 seconds, it's worth noting that uh, anyone who sat at World War's counter in the 1950s was a criminal. King was a criminal. Uh, anyone who said, I can use the same bathroom that a white person says, or uses, or I don't have to go to the back of the bus because of the color of my skin was a criminal. So what would, I mean, obviously, that's a, a little bit of a problem, that those people, too, are criminals and are the greatest heroes of our society. That's right. Um. This question is from the Utah Minutemen Project to the United for Social Justice. Should you get your wish in America be overrun by the billions of all those 
who have an equal human right to be here if they want. How do you propose to maintain the integrity of our nation, our social practices and expectations, our institutions, and our unique American identity? On the other hand, do you deem these to have any merit whatsoever in the face of what you obviously regard as our ethical obligation to welcome gleefully the massive waves of illegal alien invaders? Um, first, there are not massive waves of illegal alien invaders. Uh, Eli previously clarified the definition of an invasion, which leads to the extermination of peoples, which again is what the Europeans did when they came here. Undocumented immigrants are not invading our country. Secondly, there was, in the history of immigration uh, in the United States, especially having to do with Mexico, there's never been this horde of people that have been coming to overrun our country. Again, previous to 1986, workers would come, they'd stay for a few uh, years, or maybe even just for the growing season, and they'd go back. Even though wages are higher here in the United States, the culture here is different, people's families are back in Mexico, so they're, what they would prefer is really to stay in Mexico, even if the wages here are higher. That's not the only reason that they come here. They would prefer to come, work for a while, and then go back. So to say that there's this horde of people that can only be held back by a wall just isn't accurate. Well, and additionally, it's a crazy thought. People actually like being at home, as Will said, with their families. If you're really concerned about it, stop passing economic, military, political policies that destabilize and overthrow uh, countries in Latin America. Uh, clean uh, the beam from your own eye before picking the moat out of your neighbors. Uh, in addition, there is no American culture, and I'm tired of hearing this. Uh, you go to East LA, and you can find a bunch of people in East LA and Compton, and they'll all be American citizens, and that culture is going to be hugely different than if you go to, say, Tallahassee, and get a group of people there, or New England, or New York, or Seattle. There are different cultures within the United States, and say you want your American back, that seems disingenuous. What America? For whom? What sort of culture? Even among so-called, or, or, you know, white culture, uh, there's a big difference between Massachusetts and Manassas. Thank you. The Utah Minute Men Project has one minute to respond. Well, what I'd like to say is uh, this is actually what makes America such a wonderful place. It's a bringing together all different cultures, all different religions together. That's why we're here. That's, it's not color of skin. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking it's the color of skin. It is not. It is who, what a person does, what a person chooses to do lawfully when they make that decision. The guest worker program, uh, from what uh, Mr. Van Wagner was talking about, you know, a lot of people come here working temporarily and that, that's already in place. It's a guest worker program run by the federal government. Many nations have this. It's already in place, but they're all flaws that need to be addressed. The only other point that I would add is that I believe there is a national identity unrelated to skin color, religion, national origin, or anything along those lines. And for people to think that we don't have one, I think they speak from their ignorance and their naivety. Right. 